Hey everybody, uh, let's look at a function f of x defined by the variable x to find the slope or rate of change of a function at a specific point x, y. First, we need to take the first derivative of the function that represents the rate of change at any value of x and then we will substitute the x coordinate of the point given into the derivative and solve. So over to the side, if we have a function that just kind of waves around, floats around through the xy plane, and we pick a specific point, what we're going to find is what's the rate of change, because see how the rate fluctuates as you travel along the function? We want to know what the rate of change is at exactly one point. In order to do that, we take a function, and let's see, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, let's take f of x, that's equal to x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3x, and we're gonna investigate the rate of change specifically at this point. So taking our first derivative using power rule, we have 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 12x, minus 3. This represents the rate of change anywhere on the function, but we want to know when x is negative 1 what that rate of change is. So we substitute negative 1 in for all of these x's in the first derivative, and we make a calculation. We find that that is negative 31. That is the slope of the graph of this function at this point. A second example, now this function is not necessarily prepped in order to use power rule. Remember with power rule, we like our terms to be in the a x to the n format. This function is not. Let me zoom in a little bit. We can take f of x equals 2 times 7 minus x quantity squared and use this exponent, remember exponent before multiplying, and apply that rule, that's two seven minus x's multiplied together. Using the FOIL method, seven times seven, that's first times first, that's 49. Multiplying our outer term, seven times negative x, that's negative seven x. Our inner terms, seven times negative x, that's another negative 7x. And then finally, multiplying our last terms, negative x times negative x, that's positive x squared. Combining like terms, that's negative 14x total in the middle. And now we can distribute the two. So we have applied exponent first, now we're doing multiplication. When we distribute the 2, 2 times 49 is 98, 2 times negative 14x, that's negative 28x, and finally 2 times x squared, that's 2x squared. Now we have the function in the proper format. These are all in terms that resemble ax to the n, and now we can take our first derivative. Taking our first derivative, remember 98 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. Negative 28x has a derivative of negative 28, and 2x squared has a derivative of 4x. The original problem, we had the point 7, 0. Excuse me for moving that so much. So that tells us that we take the x coordinate, substitute it into our derivative, and that'll give us the rate of change specifically at one point. Negative 28 plus 4 times 7, that's negative 28 plus 28, giving us an overall rate of change of 0. Now when that's the case, what you have is, let me pull up a marker here, here we go. 
suppose you have a graph that looks like this, and that's typical of an x squared function with a positive x squared term. What we have found is the location at the bottom of that graph, because it has a horizontal tangent line, and that means slope of zero. Remember back in algebra, the slope of any horizontal line was zero. That's what we've done, is we've found a point where the slope is zero, and that point was seven zero. If you are asked to find an equation of a tangent line of a function at a given point, then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same two steps that we did from the first slide. We're going to take the first derivative of the function, substitute the x-coordinate of the point given, and that will be the slope of our tangent line. We're going to call it m because m was used as slope back in college algebra and, and even throughout your high school days of algebra 1, algebra 2. Once we take the first derivative, sub in our x-coordinate, that tells us the rate of change or slope of the tangent line. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the entire ordered pair that's given, put the first number in for x1, the second number in for y sub 1, and we're going to substitute it into point slope form. Y sub 1, X sub 1, that will come from the point given. M will come from the result of step 2. Let's look at an example. F of X, <coughs> excuse me. F of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 4x four cubed plus 6x squared minus 3x at the point negative 114. Now, if this feels like deja vu, it's supposed to. On our first slide, that was actually the function and point we worked with. Taking the first derivative, we still get 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 12x minus 3. Substituting negative 1 in, we're still going to get negative 31. Again, this was on the previous slide. So that rate of change of negative 31, that's our slope. That's our m value. The point given is our x1, y1 substitution. x1, y1. Writing out the point slope formula, negative 31 goes in for m. Negative 1 goes in for x sub 1, so that's x minus negative 1. And then 14 goes in for y sub 1, so that's y minus 14. Anytime you see subtracting a negative, you can change that to a plus sign. Distributing the slope, it's negative 31 times x plus negative 31 times 1, that's negative 31. Solving for y, we add 14 to both sides. y equals negative 31x. These two make negative 17. And so that's the equation of the tangent line that we were after in this problem. I took a screenshot of the graph of this function from my TI-84 emulator that I have on my work laptop. This is the graph of the original function f of x. If I go to the point negative 114 and draw a tangent line, I'm going to draw a line that touches the graph at negative 114. That line has a slope of negative 31, and it will touch the y-axis way down here at negative 17. Let's do one more example. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function f of x equals x cubed plus x plus 7 at the point negative 2, negative 3. Taking our first derivative, that's 3x squared plus 1 
seven goes to zero. We don't have to write anything down. Subbing in our x coordinate, the rate of change when x is negative two, three times negative two squared plus one, that's four times three plus one, that's a total of 13. That's our slope. The ordered pair given is our x1, y1 substitutions. Write down the point slope formula. 13 goes in for slope. X1 gets negative 2. Y1 gets negative 3. Back to back negatives, you can change to a plus sign. Distribute the slope 13x plus 26. Solving for y, we subtract 3 on both sides. y equals 13x plus 23. This is the equation of the tangent line for this function at this point. I took another screenshot. This is the graph of f of x. Then I go to the point negative two, negative three, put a dot on the graph, draw a tangent line so it touches the graph at that specific point. This particular line has a slope of 13. And if we were to go way up here and hit the y-axis, it would hit at 23. This example I haven't done yet. We will do it in class, but I wanted to leave one naked, so to speak, for our YouTube video together. Find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the given point. And this is another case where we don't have... Uh, the function prepared. So we have f of x. This is equal to two 5x plus ones multiplied together. Okay. So using FOIL method, 5x times 5x, that's 25x squared. Outside, 5x times 1. Inside, 1 times 5x. Last, 1 times 1. Combining the two terms in the middle, 5x plus 5x, that's 10x. So we have 5x squared plus 10x plus 1. This function represents the rate of change anywhere on the graph. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not yet. This is the original function written out so that each term has the ax to the n format. So I apologize, I jumped the gun. Now let's get the rate of change, f prime of x. 25x squared has a derivative of 50x. 10x has a derivative of 10. And one has a derivative, <coughs> excuse me, of zero. Now our x coordinate was zero. So we're gonna take the first derivative and substitute in a zero. 50 times zero plus 10, that's equal to 10. So our slope or rate of change at that exact point is 10. This ordered pair tells us that x sub 1 will be 0, y sub 1 will be 1. And now when we apply the point slope formula, y minus y1 
equals m times x minus x1. And we sub these values in. That's y minus 1. And that's from up here at the top. equals 10 times x minus 0. When we distribute, we're going to get y minus 1. That stays the same on the left. 10 times x minus 10 times 0. Solving for y, we add 1 to both sides. And then finally, we get y equals 10x plus 1. And that is our tangent line equation. The graph down here is the graph of our original function. And because its dominant term was x squared, we have a parabola. Our tangent line, 10x plus 1, is the equation that touches the original graph at the point 0, 1. It has a rate of change of 10 or a slope of 10 at this particular point. 0, 1 was the point given. And it touches the y-axis at positive 1. So this is our tangent line. I hope this video has helped out. You guys let me know by phone or email or ask in class anytime you run into questions. I'm going to quit zooming this real quick. I just want to try to get it all on one screen for you. Um, we will go over this one in class together, but I wanted to go ahead and just put it together for you here on a YouTube video. Um, I'll see you around. Reach out if you have questions.